Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and welcome back to part five of the 300 gallon overhaul build series. Now, hopefully you have seen parts one through three and the part technical four of the day one after the 300 gallon overhaul. Hopefully you guys have seen those videos and you know everything that's gone into this overhaul process, the amount of work, the stress, getting Big Bertha out, getting rock structures out, cleaning them, breaking them, fragging, getting fish out, eels out, just a ton of stuff has gone into getting this tank where it is now and adding the frags. And it's only been about a month and a half ish, something like that. And uh, I'm just so thankful that it's over because now the tank can start to grow and mature. And hopefully with the two years that we have left before I do relocate, I can grow this tank out again, like you guys see on my live streams. That live stream background video is actually what this tank used to look like at the two year mark when I originally set it up. So with that said, in this video, I'm going to show you guys the process of adding about 30 to 40 frags to this tank. Now, it is about an hour and a half worth of video. I'm going to fast forward and kind of cram together, do a general voiceover on adding frags, my thought process behind it. And then I'm going to show you guys what the tank looked like a month later after everything's kind of starting to encrust. The rocks have not looking as clean as they do in the intro now and just letting the tank kind of settle in and become its own. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, now before we get started, I am going to take my usual ending sales pitch and I'm going to start moving it to the beginning of my videos because it looks like I'm the only joker here on YouTube who does it at the end of the video. Now with that said, if you wanna support the channel, head over to fishofhex.com. There are hundreds of different 3D printed items. There's still some coral on the website that I currently have in the tub that's right next to the 300 gallon. So if you wanna support the channel, what I do here, feel free to check that out. We do have for the month of April, so if you're watching this in June, it's not happening, but in the month of April, we do have a buy three, get one free of 3D printed items. All right, so with that said, let's get going. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin with the left rock structure. Now, I mentioned in the previous video, I did move this rock uh, about six inches to the center of the tank, just getting it away from that side glass. Now, the reason for that is uh, not only was it better overall look because I did remove a rock structure, but the primary reason was that green slimer that you see at the top. Now, if you remember in previous videos, that was actually growing into the glass, up to the glass and out of the tank. And yeah, it looked pretty cool, but it was just a mess and it just wasn't something I wanted to deal with again. So removing or moving that rock structure to the side just gives me more room and hopefully I can trim up the coral a little bit differently this time and I don't have to run into that issue. Now, with that said, when it comes to adding coral to this rock structure, I went ahead and started with my plating Montes. Now, Something I like to do with plating corals is I like to put them low in the tank, if possible, just because obviously when they plate out, they're going to shade out everything underneath. So keeping them low to the bottom of the tank, and again, they're Monty, so they don't re really require a ton of light. Now, if you're f not familiar with this tank, I do have about 250 par at the glass of this tank. So I do run relatively high par throughout the rest of the water column. So they're gonna get plenty of light. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you decide to put these corals lower. They are easier SPS and they don't require a ton of light. But either way, I like to keep them low and I also like to keep them together. I'm a big fan of swirling Montiporos together. I just like how they look. Um, I did that back in the 125. There's a lot of underwater videos of that setup. And it's just something I like to do. So plating Montes here on the left-hand side. Uh, I put three there. I put two different, actually I put like a green one, a uh, purple rimmed one, and then I put a red one and I, they're going to put them together and hopefully they grow uh, nicely and kind of, you know, turn out nice and swirl together and all the good things that I hope they do. But either way, they're low and out of the way and they're going to look good uh, regardless. All right, so moving over here, adjusting the camera a little bit, I am going to put some uh, easy beginner SPS. Now there are a couple different Montes. I got a green Monty and then I have a bluish Polyp Montipora. I am going to put those uh, on the left-hand side of this. Now, there is a little bit of an overhang there, so they're not gonna get a ton of light. Again, the reason why I put those Montes is they don't require a lot of light. They're gonna be branching, so they should sit above the plating Montipora without any shading or any worries of that. And they're gonna fill in the gap with the green Stylophora that's actually right there uh, behind them. So, uh, just kind of a good spot for them. Fills in the gap, looks pretty good. Let's go and move on. All right, so adjusting the camera one more time for this rock structure, I'm going to start adding a couple of my higher end Acroporas. Now, the very first one I'm adding is the Walt Disney. Now, um, I'm putting it in an area where I don't really have to worry about it competing with other Acros, at least not for right now. Uh, my goal is for some of this higher end stuff is just to kind of isolate them, giving them a little bit more room so they can grow out to bigger colonies 
before I have to get in there and start trimming them because inevitably I'm going to have to. It's just how it is. Uh, if you've been here following this system, it just happens. You, you can't do anything about it. It's a, it's a box of water. These things are going to grow consistently and something's going to win and something's going to lose. And I'd prefer that my higher end acro that I sell consistently is going to win because you know longevity wise business wise it's just a good move right so with that said the walt disney is the first one to go in and then throughout the rest of this rock structure i'm just going to put some generic uh torts uh, because it's a little bit lower in light we're going to put in some other acropora some encrusting i am going to put some um plating montipora in the front there a little green with one with red polyps don't remember the name if you guys know me i'm not really good with a lot of names with these corals i just know they look cool i know how to grow them and i kind of know the best place to put them for the most part but either way uh yeah just going to be spreading out some of these corals on that new rock there which is just basic um reef saver dry rock that i had from a previous setup um either way just kind of filling it out giving some space in between now i don't want to put a ton of space because i definitely want it to look decent while they're starting to grow out i don't want to have six to ten inches between colonies which they'll eventually need when they start growing in but either way turned out pretty good okay so let's go to move on to the middle rock structure now if you remember in the previous videos i removed this entire structure i chiseled it was power washed it left it out in the cold to kill off all the encrusting sps that was on it and basically it's completely empty it's a blank slate well it's not really slate but it's pukani but you know what i mean it's ready to go and this is where i put the majority of my acroporas now i do put them relatively close for the same reason i mentioned before i want it to look good as it grows in granted it's going to require more trimming down the road but i put a ton of frags on this thing now i put them in the front the back below underneath um, again based on um, how they're going to grow what they're going to look like when they get quote unquote older um, if they're plating, if they're encrusting, uh, color wise, yes, uh, because I don't want a ton of green that are together and I don't want a ton of reds that are together. I kind of spread them out and, uh, based on type and overall aggression. So all those things are played or, or put into the, um, factors or the reasoning why I place corals where they should be. And I can sit here and go through each one of these corals, tell you why I put it there for what reason, but the video would be ridiculously long and, uh, we're already like seven and a half minutes in. So uh, let's just say that I put everything where it should be and it should look good. <laughs> That's a horrible way to, to sum this up, but I can't have the video be that long. Uh, if you want more in-depth stuff, we could probably address that later on. Let me know in the comment section. But either way, uh, these corals are all from a buddy of mine. Well, at least 90% of them, Jack. Uh, again, he's one of two systems that I trust that I can get stuff from that I know I'm not going to have any issues with. And uh, he just cut me a whole bunch of uh, higher end stuff and some stuff that I've been missing for quite a while. And I can't, I can't explain or stress enough how excited I am to see this particular rock structure grow out. Now, of course, I like the other ones. I'm not going to be biased here, but this middle one, just the way that it's shaped, it's a really good look. The way these corals are going to branch out and crust, plate, shelf, it's just going to be very nice, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so now we're focusing on our last rock structure here on the right-hand side of the tank. And as you can see, there's already a ton of coral on this one. Uh, we have our big mushroom coral in the front. We have a bunch of encrusting LPS. We have our groups Gorgonian, a couple SPS, media showers and uh, Goniaporas, Zoas, you name it. There's a ton of stuff on this rock structure and uh, there's not really a lot of room, but there is a few spots on the top, the back, and also along the far side near the mushroom. And I figured I'd go ahead and put a few SPS in there. Nothing crazy, gonna do um, a um, Rainbow Grandulosa, an encrusting SPS, a, uh, a green monster, and I think I am gonna put a piece of my green slimer in the back just because it is a nice area for it to grow in the open. But other than that, there's not a ton of room on this rock structure, so that's about it when it comes to putting corals on that. Okay, so now that we've gone through the process of adding the frags to the 300 gallon reef, let's go ahead and fast forward 30 days and I'll show you guys what the 300 gallon looks like today. So, as you can see, it's a pretty big difference between now and then. I've added several more corals over that time. I put some stuff on the bottom, I put little mini colonies in there. I've just kind of filled in the gaps that I thought I needed to. Now, because they are just frags and I have a pretty good idea of how everything's going to look and grow and fit together, I do have this mini theme that I've built up in the back of my head, which I did in the previous version of this tank and it didn't necessarily work out the way I wanted to, but I feel like I've learned from my mistakes and I've addressed most of those mistakes 
in a previous video, but if you're interested, I can always make another one talking about all the mistakes I've made in this system when I first set it up. So if you guys want that video, let me know and I will uh, get one out. So with that said, I feel like I've addressed a lot of those. And again, I have a pretty good idea of what this tank is going to look like when it's completely grown out. But we really won't know until we get to that point. God willing, hopefully everything goes well and the tank doesn't crash and everything just kind of goes the way it should. But only time will tell. Until then, my focus for this tank is to keep the water parameters as stable as possible, just like any other reefer. Keep my nitrates and phosphates in appropriate range. Make sure I keep uh, my grow out tubs nice and clean. Of course, keep my alkalinity as stable as possible. Keep up on my maintenance. Keep up my carbon. Keep up my water changes. Keep the glass clean because you all keep complaining about that. I'm going to try to give you guys as many videos and stuff as I can about this setup as we go. And uh, just try to enjoy the tank as much as possible. Now, as you guys know, when Big Bertha started destroying the 300 originally, it really took a lot away from this tank. I did not enjoy it. It just was like watching my art be destroyed in front of me and not being able to do anything about it. But now that she's out of the tank, I can finally and safely start this tank over again and hopefully it will grow back into the tank that you guys enjoy in the uh, live stream, right? So with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or anything you want to know about this tank, feel free to put it in the comment section. If there's any specific videos you want regarding this setup, topic-wise, anything like that, put that stuff in the comment section and I will do my best to make those videos, okay? So until then, I'll see you later and be safe. Peace.